мы сейчас идем в наш клешер. Поворачивайся, девочка. Так. О, ты сама из себя очень красавица моя. Ой, такая прекрасная на Норвегии. Very, very beautiful. Все. А? На, нажимаю на фото он. Фотки есть, да? Куда, девочка? Весь Норвегия. И пройти вот туда, он водопады. Да водопады далеко сильно. Ничего не далеко. Ну ладно. Хорошо. Хорошо. А то мы видим принцесс. А это вот наш Норвегия. Это вот наш Норвегия. Норвежский сон. Норвежское солнце. Это принцесса. А там впереди водопады. Я думаю, что я потом рассмотрю эти водопады. Мы едем на экскурсию Norwegian Sun, Minden Hall, Glacier, Glacier, Hatchery and Gardens. И это наш бас. Мы едем на Третья часть Аляски живут ученые. Третья часть Аляски живут здесь. Это, это центр. Ну, получается для Аляски. 32 тысячи. Now we have, you know, the different shops and those things on our right and our left. We have the, the tramway on your left. Um, what time does your ship leave? Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. Good. You, you've got some time today. Oh, yeah. It's good. Yeah. So we are the capital city, but there are no roads connecting us to any other city. Uh, the reason for that is we have the the mountains, the coastal mountain range all around us on our right, and then we have the ocean, the channel, the Gastono Channel on your left. <coughs> there are no roads out of Juneau, and so this road goes for about 50 miles, and then it stops. It says end road, you have to turn around and come back. <coughs> and you know, so it's a, less than 80 kilometers as well. Okay. Now, now coming on our left, 
Okay, we'll have the Red Dock Saloon. The Red Dock Saloon. Now, have some of you heard of this building before? Yeah, a few of you? Okay. <clears throat> now, the Red Dock Saloon is most famous for a, a man named Wyatt Earp. That building is on your right. The large red building with the red dog. Right there. <clears throat> now, Wyatt Earp was a U.S. Marshal, a law enforcement agent, at the OK Corral. A shootout in Tombstone, Arizona. And, you know, he came to Juno here as well. But he's having such a grand time, you know, that historically you need to check your gun at the bar um, before you started to drink. Um, but he forgot it that night. And so the bar kept it. It's hanging up on the wall today. You're able to go check it out. But aside from that, you know, if you're looking for different beers and drinks, um, we produce in Juno a nationally distributed beer called Alaskan. The Alaskan um, has received higher uh, ranks before. Um, but they also serve a drink here called a duck fart. A duck fart, yeah. Curiously, right? Duck fart. Um, <clears throat> It's a mixture of Crown Royale, Bailey's, and Kahlua. So, you know, people like the sound of it, but you know they, they're afraid of the name sometimes. And I say nay nay, don't worry. Um, <clears throat> now Douglas Island is also a part of the city of Juneau. There are about 2,000 people that live there. <laughs> Uh -huh. Now, there's only one way over there, and that is through the bridge that will be on your left, okay? So we have one bridge over to Douglas Island. We're on the main road right now. We're headed to the glacier. Later today. We'll also probably have some in the trees um, right here opposite the hatchery. You may be able to see some. What is this, a room as well? See some few, I think. Are they uh, sandwiches coming up yet? Are the salmon coming up? Yes, they are. <clears throat> We have salmon coming up, so you'll see them. You'll see them come up. Okay. Yeah, so we have <coughs> this a hatchery worker here. Uh, she's going to come on up for you. Um, you know, feel free to welcome her. Hoot and holler. organization known as DIPAC. Um, and DIPAC stands for Douglas Island Pink and Chung. So that's the other name we go by. Uh, Douglas Island is actually the island directly behind me here, just across the channel, um, through that fog back there. Uh, and that's where back in 1975 we were originally founded by a man named Vlad McCauley. Um, and he started this operation 
on a very, very small scale uh, in his own backyard with a group of his science students. So he noticed a very large depletion in the salmon population here in the Juneau area and decided to get you know, hundreds and, and thousands of fertilized baby salmon eggs all ready to go from there. So, so that part of it's you know, pretty simple and, and pretty straightforward, easy for us to, to uh, conduct. Um, put, but before I tell sleep. you what happens um, to the babies, though, you might be wondering as well what happens to the adults, um, the, the male and the female. Uh, so naturally, this is the end of their life cycle. Both male and female do uh, die very shortly after spawning, naturally. Um, so these salmon uh, will, will die very shortly after this process is all said and done. Uh, but what we do with those carcasses afterwards is we end up shipping most of them overseas to be processed into things like cat food, uh, dog food, fertilizer, things like that. Uh, we'll also take some and grind it up and then toss it back out in the ocean for other animals to feed off of. And uh, it really will not be used for human consumption at this time. Uh, these salmon are essentially rotting from the inside out, so they're really better left for those other, other uses and, um, and nothing goes to waste as well. So, uh, so that's what's going to happen to those adults. Uh, but the, the babies themselves, the fertilized eggs, we will take actually from under the building over here and bring them next all the way up to the second floor there on your left through those double green doors. Uh, and that's our incubation room. Um, and those eggs are going to be housed in there for about three to four months, just developing and eventually hatching in that area. And then once they're done with that, uh, that portion of the cycle, they're going to next be transferred all the way back over into those nest nests once again. So, uh, so that's kind of that. The general idea of that cycle, or our, our process year-round, consists of these, these portions in, in the cycle. Um, but uh, the last thing I, I do want to mention as well for you folks, um, before you head inside here back behind me, is uh, that we are commonly asked about here at the hatchery whether or not we are a fish farm, um, or whether or not we associate with fish farms in any way. Uh, and I just want to make it clear that we are not a fish farm. Um, what we do here is what's known as ocean branching, and what makes us different from a fish farm is our salmon are spending only about 5% of their lifetime here with us entirely. Uh, whereas in a fish farm, they generally will spend their entire lives in a fairly enclosed area. So that's really, really important to remember. And uh, farming of salmon is actually illegal in the state of Alaska and has been since 1992. So you are guaranteed wild salmon no matter where you purchase it in our state nowadays as well. So, so I just thought I'd let you know that. It's a good thing to know. Um, but uh, that, that's all the information I did want to give you folks up here on the rampway today as well. So. Dead fish? No, it's a flat, uh, what do they call it? Uh, elephant. Flounder? Flounder. They call it a flounder. It has both its eyes on one side of its head. It's a stars, that we saw. It's also a stars. We saw a lot of starfish. Starfish. There is a A scopin, yeah. A scopin. Yeah. Uh, what, uh, this is it's, uh, not salmon. Salmon. That is a rockfish in there. That's a beautiful. What is white? Which one? White. White. Oh, that is a an anemone. Anemone. <laughs> so it is. Um, here, let me find it for you. Oh, it's right here. Uh. So it's a plumbo's anemone. Oh, plumbo's anemone. Oh my gosh, look at this guy. It's just soft and mushy. Starfish. Yes. Starfish. Yeah. Starfish. 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 Uh, the young 
А это огурец. А такие мы держали в руках. Uh, regardless of the hatchery. The hatchery basically just um, gives the highest amount of success. So, do they snag them or do they use both? They use both. Yeah. It's, yeah, it just depends. Um, yeah, what I've, what I've got. Now what that means is that people come in here to do their bigger shopping, to do um, doctor's appointments and those things. I actually had a group yesterday where there's a woman here from Skagway, um, about you know 100 miles away, northwest, so that's where you're headed. And uh, she was actually just here primarily to go to the natural doctor, the naturalist, and those things. Um, now, as far as, you know, amenities for that, in addition, um, this and Ketchikan, do you know Ketchikan are the only places in Southeast Alaska with a um, birthing unit? I don't know. Delivery? I don't know the right term. Yeah, the birthing unit, okay. Sounds so intense. I guess birthing is intense. So never mind. Um, yeah, so, you know, other than that, though, if you're not from Ketchikan or Juneau, you have to basically take a ferry or a small plane over to those two areas to deliver your baby as well. So, you know, it's pretty intense, um, as I said before. You know, those kind of things, this way of life here as well. We also have a float plane. Um, it's in the horizon. It's on going to be on your left. On your left, uh, coming up. I see it now. That is taking off, I can only suspect, from our international airport. So our international airport has a float plane runway. You know, pretty fun to see sometimes. wildlife sanctuary here. See if I want to go into Juno, but it's brown, it's sitting in the middle of the sandbar. We should pass that again though.